Hello YouTube. Alright, today we're going to be installing 4.4 KitKat onto this LG G2. And I have to apologize for the shaky video and bad quality. It's being recorded on a Samsung Galaxy S4. And the focus, as you can see, is horrible. Anyway, I've already done my wipe. I'm about to do my install. Now it's through Paranoid. Paranoid Android using uh, t uh, TWRP uh, recovery, the latest version, as you can see. Focus. There it is, version 2632. Okay, we can select the actual ROM, make sure that it does select. And let's see, see what I mean? I actually hit the, which I will be selecting those anyway, the gaps. Let's see, where is it at? Right there, 4.0 alpha. And then, and then you want to add your, oops, it is kind of a, it's also kind of do, hard to do holding a phone. Can't believe my tripod broke. Anyway, go ahead and grab um, the full, be it the Paranoid Android Chips full 4.4. Put those in there and flash, and this is the fastest flash. And I flash my share of phones that I've ever seen. Um, I'm, wait, I'm not even going to take a pause. Uh, use the pause function here on this phone. That's how fast it does it. Um, basically, when this is done, it will be a Nexus 5, but <laughs> much better. Uh, seeing that, seeing how its speaker was, is much better, the um, screen's larger. Um, it's already done with the ROM, as you can see there. That's how small 4.4 is. But you don't get any of the goodies. There's very few customizable um, uh, parts to the ROM. I think you can change your battery style icon. That's about it, really. Uh, oh, and you can also change your clock speed. Um, <clears throat> your governors and stuff like that. But other than that, you basically got a Nexus 5. It's done. Reboot system. I don't ever second wipe. Now, this quality is horrible. And there's the Nexus 5 boot screen. Or boot animation, I would say. Very simple. That's very. Now, you all, as you flash phones before, you know that. Let me see if I can get a little better light. You know that, um, that fir the first boot up is the longest. Oh, and now we've got our status light showing up there. Always a good sign. I know with all LG phones, um, that's pretty much assuring you that the ROM went through successfully. Mm. Mm -hmm. All in all, about maybe two minutes. If I can get some more light. It's a little better, I guess. I would pause though. Here we go. Now it's very low lit because it has auto brightness set at first and you can't change it until you get into it. Let me pause for. Okay. It's connecting and authenticating and all that good stuff. It's like a 20-something character key. I may have miskeyed it. Yeah, one. Okay, got it now. And there's the camera, and don't know where the tripod went, but... That's a little better over here. Okay. Once again. Okay. Oh, I'll be damned. 
I apologize. I think I'm gonna pause this down. I won't let you see it. Okay, here we go. Setup's a good bit different than what you'd see. Not a good bit, but a little bit. And this, I'm just going to give you a basic rundown of the 4.4. And yes, I'm in, because you know you pretty much got to be. And there it is. Now I can actually get some brightness on this thing. There we go. Not too much. Okay, anyway, there it is. Still a little too bright, huh? Yeah, kind of miss my camera now. That's all I have to do. But. And there it is. Not the only thing they didn't change. Everything else is white. They kept those blue. I, I don't know. But like I said, when I told you that there was no extra goodies, there's no extra goodies. It's basically, you know, for everything you find on the N5. With just a little extra. Of course, but you know you've got it on a much more um, advanced phone. When it, well, processor pretty much the same, the GPU is the same, but the phone itself just much more elegant and stylish, and I built better if you ask me. Um, most basically just the phone's uh, bigger, uh, better brother the, to the um, the N5. We got about phone. 4.4. There it is. Oops, how too long? Mm. One of the gotta be one of the coolest jelly beans. <laughs> jelly beans. Easter eggs on Android yet. Anyway. And that's it. Extremely fluid. I don't know what it's going to be running. Probably, like I said, it's now to, in order to, as you can see, there's no developer options. Just like when they started with 422, um, you had to go to about phone and build number, tap it seven times. Same with here, this this way. Now the little pop-up menus have changed. No little notifications. Uh, that also opens uh, performance and or developer options and performance now. Go to performance. Yeah, I agree. I know it will mess my device up. Oops. It's ma the maximum is already set and minimums at 300 and on demand where I like to keep it, which is pretty good. You can also change the governor, of course, like for benchmarking or battery saving. If you want to pop it on up to performance, it would stay at you know, 2,265 megahertz constantly. And that's good for benchmarking, but for not for battery life, it'll eat it and eat it up pretty quick. Um, anyway, slap it back on to on demand. And you can also, there's memory management with ZRAM control, and um, you can purge your assets and 16 bit transparency, which I don't really like. I'm going to give you forewarn you. I know you've. It's, you're familiar with the Nexus 5, you've probably heard of the ARC, the ARC runtime. That's optional, as an option, compared or, uh, with uh, <clears throat> that you can use instead of Dalvik. Um, do not do this. I don't care what that son of a bitch from Android Authority says. ART is not better. It may be million. It may run applications millions of a second faster. But in the long run, it crashes your phone. Trust me, I found out the hard way on this, and so has pretty much every other N5 user in the world. Uh, if you're wondering where that's at, it's down under developer options, select runtime, and it's right there. Use Dalvik or use Art. Stay away. It should have a big warning, which it doesn't either. You select it, and it just goes back to developer options. Yeah, after running a few applications and stuff on your phone for about a half hour, it crashes. And I mean, you have to do a hard, res a hard, uh, hard reset to get back into recovery mode. But there it is. Okay, Google.
Open calculator. I like how it has the um, Google Now integration. Opening app. Uh, that works very well. I wish it would work when the screen's off, kind of like how the um, the uh, Moto X does, which is like the only cool feature of the Moto X. But, you know, now for UG2 users out there, you're like, oh no, what about the tap, uh, the knock on? Well, you still got it to knock on. Oh, I'm going to throw myself off here, right now. I'm sorry. I was making sure that's where maybe it's just because it is now booted up. Oh, my hand's touching over here. That's what it was. My palm was lightly grazing on it. But anyway, it's still there to unlock. But you cannot tap to, uh, to lock. To put it in sleep. You still have to manually do it back there. Tap here. And you've got knock-on feature still. So, you lose a little bit, but you gain KitKat, which is the most fluid, um, beautifully designed Android OS yet. Just awesome. I'm going to put the uh, links to the XDA forum in the description. It's pretty easy. If you're interested in doing this, give it a shot. I think you'll absolutely love it. Later, guys.